Well, hello again. <laughs> Back with another video. Um, I've got some very interesting stuff to show, but first I thought I'd just uh, show what I've been doing here. This is the garden cottage, the groundskeeper's cottage, um, which I'm not sure if I said in a previous video, but I'm thinking now might be the place that the character goes back to to advance time and start the next day in the game. Uh, the, the idea being that if someone asked you to house sit and they had a massive property with a, a cottage on it, that you'd stay in the cottage and not in the main house and just go into the main house to water plants, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, so I might make this the save point. Uh, I might make it so that you can quick save because I hate games that make you that force you to only be able to save in certain places. So I might implement a, a quick save system where you can save anywhere, but the main save is implemented in going to bed every night and starting the next day. And this will be the place that you do it if that's what I decide. Um, just a little room, you walk in the door here, there's a kitchen, a living room. A bedroom and a bathroom. Uh, you can see I haven't really got furniture in because I got horrendously distracted while I was building this. But um, I was uh, I was watching a YouTube video uh, about uh, AI generated art, and this AI you basically feed it a phrase and it generates a series of of frames of art and exports it as a video. So. Uh, uh, the, the guy who made the video showed a, f a few examples and he also shared a link to the the code that actually generates the stuff and I was very interested so I started feeding it phrases and ended up with some very very disturbing things. Now it's always been my intention to have paintings in the game that kind of move like as you pass them just in the, the at the edge of your perception and I wasn't sure how I was going to implement this. So this seemed like something worth investigating. So for instance, I fed the AI the phrase scary monster, and this is what it came up with. That's uh, <laughs> it's quite disturbing, right? Um, what I did was I limited each one to 15 seconds, and I basically sat at my computer feeding it phrases until Google decided yesterday that I'd had enough processor time and kicked me off or rather shunted me onto a, a lower performance section of the AI where instead of taking 15 minutes to generate one of these animations it was taking four hours so at that point I stopped but by then I already had all of these um <laughs> just to give an example I typed in uh, um uh let's see uh crying woman pursued by vampire and got this which is extremely disturbing as you can see watching watching the ai kind of generate the facial features is endlessly fascinating and very very creepy so then i thought how am i going to implement this in game uh and i'll show you the code in a second but this is what i've come up with so far so these are three paintings. Uh, if you go up to a painting, I'm going to hit play. If you go up to a painting, you will get the title. And for the and for the 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 title of each painting, I just use the phrase that I fed the AI. And if you interact with it, it'll give you a little text that you know it, that represents your character's thoughts on the on the art. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, and just as an example of the kind of thing that I can do, um, I built some movement into the interact on this one. This painting is called The Dream Worlds of Clive Barker. And if you interact with it, this is what happens. And I mean, that's that's amazing, right? Imagine imagine seeing that like in a in a scary house like at three in the morning, like with a flashlight in a painting frame that would scare the pants off me. So, um, and then if you move away, it resets. Now, I haven't fleshed out the code properly. If you move away while it's still playing, it doesn't reset. But if you interact with it again, it, you know, see, it's, there's, there's bugs to be ironed out and I'm not sure there. It'll reset and then play. 
Uh, let me show you the code. This is this is how it works. Now, I wanted to use my interactive object base blueprint like I do for all of my interactable objects, but I ran into a bug because unfortunately, when you when you create the painting, you need to set it up on an event begin play. Now this code over here is the same stuff that runs in every interactable object in the parent blueprint. Basically, we create a reference to the player and to the notify and feedback widgets. And we do that in the parent blueprint so we don't have to do it in every other one. The problem is, I then need this, this code here, which as you can see, it says set initial painting position to run as well. And if I put an event begin play here and the parent blueprint class has an event begin play in it as well, the one in the child blueprint will replace the one in the parent blueprint, which means this code wouldn't run. So, I mean, that was three hours of me pulling my hair out last night before I figured out why that was happening. And um, so I eventually decided I needed to create each painting as a standalone blueprint with all of the stuff that I would normally run in a parent class blueprint, just so that I could have the set initial painting position code in it as well. And as is the case with everything else I've done in the game so far, I'm sure there are more efficient ways of doing all of this stuff. Um, but here's what here's what we do. We create a, here's the, the, all of the painting blueprints. You can see each painting is separate. And moreover, each painting has to have all of these components in it. Okay, so this is the actual media file. You can see it's just a reference to the media file. Then we have to have a media player. Now, I would hope to use one media player for all of them, but I mean, if you think about it logically, that doesn't make sense. You have multiple screens, as it were, playing multiple videos. You need a separate media player for each one of them. Um, if I had to open one of them, you can see it's essentially, I mean, it's got a, a list of all of the files that it has access to, but each player is going to play only that file in that painting. Um, the next thing we do is um, we, so we, oh wait, I haven't finished showing you this yet. Uh, we then generate a texture from the, from the media player. And then from the texture, we generate a material and the material, the material is applied to a flat plane on the inside of the painting frame. And that's how it works. But that means that every single video has to have all of these elements generated and I have to do each one of them manually. And um, once that's all done, we get a reference to the media player for that particular painting, in this case, the Dream Worlds of Cloud Barker. Open source, and again, we're opening the Dream Worlds of Cloud Barker. We then use this uh, bind event on to on media opened. And the reason we use this bind command here is because if we just continue the code there, um, the game assumes that the video file was opened and then runs the next code. By using this bind on media opened, um, we make sure that the code waits until the, the media player is ready with the file loaded before it runs the next command. The next command is seek. So what I do is for each painting, I can set a custom seek time, um, which at the moment is either five or 10 seconds, depending on the painting. But what I'll do at some point is watch through each video, find my favorite frame to start on um, and insert the time over here. So that that's the initial state of the painting. Um, this one is slightly different because um, I've got a pause function in here. Uh, the others don't necessarily have pause functions. The reason this one has a pause function in is um, because on the interact, uh, the, 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 the show painting name and hide painting name are essentially the same as the, the show interact message and hide interact message from any other interactable thing. But in this case, in the, in the case of the Clive Barker painting, this one, because I wanted to demo what you can do with it, when you move out of the collision box so on component end overlap, we, um, we seek back to the original time and then pause and uh, pass feedback message to player controller. This is like if you if you interact with it, it's going to say, isn't Clive Barker the Hellraiser guy? But then in the case of the Clive Barker thing, we're going to play the, the painting, the, play the painting, that sounds ridiculous, but you know what I mean. Um, 
and yeah so so this one is slightly different from the others just because i wanted to demo the kind of thing you can do um you'll notice though that when i hit play there's a little performance hit now it's not too bad now but uh, so far i've made 16 paintings and when the game is trying to initialize all 16 paintings at once, there's it's not very long, but there's about a one second period of time on launch where processor usage spikes to 100%. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that yet. Um, this may not be the most efficient way of doing this. It may turn out to be horrendously inefficient, especially considering there's no upper limit yet to the amount of paintings I want to have in the game. And also there's at least two TVs that I want to have content for as well that you can switch the TV on and watch something. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there yet, but we'll see. So this this may turn out to be horrendously inefficient. I'm not sure how I'm going to cope with it. But that is what I've been doing with myself the past couple of days. Um, yeah, things are really ramping up. I'm pushing at the limits of what I know about the technology and what the technology can do itself. It's very, very, very exciting. Very exciting stuff to come. So uh, just a short video today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.